yeah, let's let's start start streaming. Um, so today I, I'm going to build a little extension for Drafttail. Um, I've, I've been asked by many people to build like all kinds of extensions um, to add some specific content or do something that replicates stream field. Um, and this request in particular comes from uh, Salah Adin. I don't know how you pronounce your username. Jose Luis <laughs> from Colombia. Um, he wants to use to Excel quite a lot, especially around the issue tracker, which is always nice to have people who comment on, on things. So uh, here he said he would be it would be nice to have um, more examples of plugins that count things, so count words, characters, and so on. Um, we already have a few of those plugins out there from the folks at Dix Digital. They they made quite a few very nice like kind of metrics calculation plugins for DraftJS and DraftTail. Um, they're, they're reading level plugins that have all sorts of calculations. So I'll do sim something similar today, but um, I guess talk through it in a way that's interesting, regardless of which type of plugin you're building. And um, also hopefully something that solves a real problem. Um, so some, so the, one, the thing I want to build is a plugin that um, gives people a way to enforce, uh, or at least show, um, the maximum length that a field is allowed to be. So uh, if you're thinking of, for example, uh, the intro text at the, at the top of the page, maybe you want to enforce that this isn't longer than, say, 200 characters so that it fits nicely within the layout, or maybe it's just SEO, you know, you would rather have the top of the page, like above the fold, be a given length. Um, so let's see how we can enforce this with Draft.js. Um, and yeah, the, the thing I like about that is that it's not really dependent on the field being rich text. Even if it's plain text, it's still a useful feature to be able to say it has to be that much and not much more. Um, yeah, and, and, and also the reason why it's interesting to do this with Java.js is that then it also works if the field is rich text. So, for example, if you have a bold within your text, it won't really change the length of the text like as the visual um, sequence of characters on the screen. But in terms of storage format, if you store your rich text as HTML, well, the tags will take some place, some space. So Draft.js allows us, like, perhaps not to solve this completely, but at least to um, mitigate the problem and decide per type of rich text, like bold or link and so on, how we want to take them into account in the calculation of, of length. Um, yeah, and this also ties with this um, existing issue on Wagtail that's about um, max character counts for rich text fields. So right now, I think that if you set a max length, like on a Django, Django style, Django model, Django field, um, it will be on the rich text um, storage format, which if you use a lot of formatting, it will mean you have very little space left for text. Um, so that's probably bad. And I don't think in this day and age it's really about like storage limitations. Like I think if you use Postgres, most full text fields are of infinite length anyway. So this is just about um, working with people's UIs and specific problems. So um, yeah, let's try to make a field that does that and that enforces some maximum length. We'll see in detail what kind of like maximum this is and how it calculates it. Um, and the way I want to build this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's the existing constraint. The way I want to build this is uh, following Twitter's um, UI, which I think is quite good for, for tweets. So uh, now streaming. I'll just show you a quick demo of what I'm after. So I'm typing a tweet here and you can see In the um, bottom right corner, there's this little, um, what do you call this, radial progress bar, donut chart progress bar, <laughs> circle progress bar that just fills up um, along, the, along the outer circle uh, as, as much as I type. So for example, if I copy and paste this, yeah, it fills up more. And you can see here, it's going, getting very close to the limit. So it's changed its color, which is quite nice. And it also added this little like exact counts so I can have the exact number of characters in my tweet, which if you think of a tweet, that's very useful. 
So that's exactly what I would like to build, um, having this visual indication of how much space there is left in the field and having the exact count is even better. Um, and also if I add a bit more characters, gets to zero, it turns red, which is quite cool. But then if I go beyond zero, that's interesting. So in the negatives, it still counts the same, but it also it's also adding this highlighting to the text that goes beyond the limit. And that's something that I think is quite cool because it's a clear visualization for the user of, oh, this is going, this is getting too much, this isn't going to fit, and it won't work. And the visualization of the limits is directly on the text. That's that's the really cool part. It's not just like as an indicator of somewhere in a toolbar that says, oh, you have too much text. It's exactly where people are looking when they type the text. Um, so I want to build the same thing with Draft.js and I'm not like 100% sure it's possible, just like 90% sure, but yeah, we'll see how far, how far we go and I'll just finish that tweet um, before we move on. Come say hi if you're at Wagtail Space. Boom. So yeah, let's let's build that. Um, and this time around, usually when I when I demonstrate those types of features with um, Draft.js, I try to go for um, the least work that's not Draft.js. Like if there is any specific UI, I'll go for the simplest UI, and not try to really make anything that's fancy. Just like make it work with Draft.js API, demonstrate the API, and that's it. This time around, I want to go the other way around. I want to demonstrate as much as possible of how you can make a good UI with it. So I'll try to make it look just just right and basically take it as far as possible. Um, now, moving on, let's actually build the thing. <laughs> um, to build this, I'm going to use this repository. Um, this is my Draft.js playground. Basically, it's the Draft.tail editor in an environment that's not Wagtail, but still makes sense to look at. So um, it has a demonstrations of a few extensions I made myself, really simple ones. Um, it has demonstrations of the conversion from Draft.js content to HTML, and I think Markdown as well I added. Um, it has, it visualizes its content formats, and you have the preview side by side, so it's quite a nice environment to um, to use to tinker with Drafttail. Um, and also happens to be what I use to write my blog posts. Um, even though my site isn't using Drafttail, it's just like a static, static files with Jekyll, like modern files, I still use this environment to um, write my blog posts. So I, I quite like to, to work on this and make it more suitable for my use case. Um, and yeah, I have a local copy of this in case this page doesn't start. But basically, it's available on GitHub, and you'll be able to see it by the end of the stream. Um, and I can close that now and start the server, and hopefully, it all works. Um, so I, I have a like blank repository, as you see it on master right now. I haven't done any work on this so far. I, I tried to at least explore whether it was feasible or not, and I think I can say that it is. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see for sure in a few minutes. And hopefully this time around, um, if anyone is watching, let, let me know, please, if um, some frames drop from the, from the video. Uh, my computer is, yeah, I'm pushing the limits. <laughs> so I hope that it still um, works just fine with the running server and everything, the development tools. But if not, let me know and I'll try to kill some processes, basically, until it's fluid enough. Um, and I'll probably have to kill all the tabs ever. So while we wait for this to start, um, I can show you quickly what's in this repository, how it works under the hood, before we dive into the details of this particular extension. Um, yeah, if, if you just care about the extension, let's keep five or 10 minutes ahead. Um, so tooling first, this repository is half Python, half um, React. The Python half is the simplest. It's using Draft.js Explorer, um, exposed to the UI with um, Flask. So it's a very small 
API, or you give it Draft.js content in, and it answers with HTML and Markdown. Um, and yeah, so the, the conversion is done with the same tool that uh, Wagtail uses, and it also converts to Markdown with some like experimental extension I built. Um, we can look at the Python code very quickly. So if you're familiar with um, Draft.tail within Wagtail, this is very similar. The only difference is that there isn't any kind of Wagtail's rich text features API. So this is inter integrating directly straight with the exporter. Um, and it only does conversion from Draft.js to HTML and Markdown, not the other way around. Wagtail stores its content as HTML, so it still has to go two ways. HTML to Draft.js and Draft.js to HTML. Um, Whereas this is just Draft.js stored, rendered as HTML. And this part might sound very familiar. So for example, um, an image decorator creates an image element and sets its attributes based on the attributes of the um, Draft.js content. Um, and same link creates an A tag from with an href from the URL prop of the link entity. Um, yeah, this stream kind of assumes some Draft.js knowledge. Uh, so let's see if the server got started. Yeah, okay. In the past, I used to have one screen with all the things um, at once, like without me having to tab around, but obviously it um, meant I had to have a bigger screen and there would be less things in a single place. So I'm trying to change my setup and hopefully this is still nice to watch even though I'm not showing everything at once. So this is my preview environment, my Draft.tail playground. Um, leftmost is leftmost is the editor, middle is the live preview with HTML, and rightmost is the developer tools. Um, and I type, and it shows on the right, and bold becomes bold, and the list becomes a list and so on. So this is mostly what's inside Wagtail, except for, of course, links and images and things like that, which are specific to this implementation. So yeah, no fancy model, just the bare minimum. And underneath the editor right there, you can see the uh, Markdown version, the HTML and the Draft.js content states. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool when you're developing with Draft.tail, like extensions or things, things like. Um, now onto our particular extension. Um, quickly switch back to the code. So that was the Python side. Now the JS side. Uh, it's a create React app. Um, app. I guess is the word <laughs> that integrates Draft.tail and Draft.js as you would expect and also has some more React for the, um, the editor's um, debug UI but otherwise it's, it's really simple just create React app and it has an app component that renders the editor and that's about it. Can I show it quickly? Yeah it also has some configuration and it renders the editor right there. Um, nothing too fancy. So the plugin we're going to create today looks quite similar in how it's made to this existing reading time plugin. Um, it's a plugin that counts reading time here, counts characters. Ours will be quite similar, except there'll be like kind of a maximum where the editor has to mean an invalid state. And we also want to make it look fancy. Um, so I'll reorder my code a bit, uh, make an extensions folder because I don't really like this terminology I have up there. Yeah, reading time moves there. Remove the controls stuff and editor. Probably need to update that extensions. No. Extensions is side by side with components. So, like that. That looks about right. Okay. That seems okay. And now we want a new extension. So, we'll call it um, max length. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not very 
inspired but that will do um, and so for now I'll just copy what reading time is doing so I'll put it here in this controls object from the draft tail um, API controls prop sorry and we'll see what happens and by the way if, if you if anyone is watching uh, feel free to ask questions at any time about what I'm doing or anything else I, I'm always happy to um, answer any questions so it's failing to compile which is great because I didn't create the file so obviously it shouldn't be working so um, I'll just copy the content of this file over to a separate file and it means we should have the same thing twice but at least we can see it working incrementally um, mm -hmm. max length oh, it's still reading time so for the reading time plugin I use this separate package package called reading time that basically um, um, duplicates medium's reading time feature where it shows you uh, how much how much time you have you, it would take to read a given article um, yeah but for this package I don't think I'll need it so um, yeah this is working I can see that that's probably mine the second one or maybe this one is but the both of them are working so we can move on and actually edit it to what we want um, so simple it would be very simple I would like it to display the, the length of the field at this given point in time uh, so we take this text right there and I'll explain what it does a bit later hello and we render this and we could maybe do a bit something a bit fancier like text that length out of 50 and this should just display in the toolbar yep yep simple enough so far okay so what is going on right there um, we're using this draft API called control control is a terrible name for a thing that can render in the toolbar but can also render anywhere else if it doesn't want to be in a toolbar so it's a very 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 low level API all it does is give you this way to access the editor states and I think it also gives you a way to update it so you can build pretty much anything that uh, interacts with the current editor state with this and the editor state contains the content of course but also the selection so you can move around the cursor in the editor depending on what you do with the content and you can also of course change any of the content so for example you can use this to build a clear all formatting uh, feature let's say if you paste a lot of text in your editor and you want to clean it completely you could build this with that you could also build the same thing that only cleans whatever is in the current selection because you also have access to the selection um, so yeah, it's it's very low level. You can do quite a lot with this, um, and it has a terrible name just because I I'm not that good at naming. <laughs> um, and in this case, so we we get the editor state from this function, and then from the editor state we get the content state, and we get it in plain text. So all of this is DraftJS APIs that if you want to really use this, you have to go look them up on the DraftJS website. Um, mm -hmm. and then toolbar button this comes from draft tail so when I, I made draft tail the toolbar button is what is inside the toolbar of course and I also I tried to make some of those components reusable so that if people want to make their own well their own clear formatting button they don't have to replicate all those styles you can just reuse um, the react components and it has a name I don't think the name really matters that much I think I mostly used it as a way to target the buttons um, where did I use it? in like integration tests like browser automation tests um, but it's probably mandatory so we should give it a name that's uh, meaningful and yeah let's not overthink it too much and label is just text that gets displayed um, right there and on click is what happens when you click on the button um, 
yeah, that's about it. So now what we want to do based on this is um, get the length of the whole editor and check if it's above or below a uh, given limit. So um, max content length equals 50. I'll start with a uh, like hard-coded thing for now. Hard-coded limit, and then we can think of how to make this configurable. Um, so I would like this to be usable in, in Wagtail or in any other CMS that uses Drafttail. But the big thing that we'll be missing is how do you enforce validation of this within the form you have on your site. So I imagine that when you're using this in the real world, like CMS edit page edit form, um, you have kind of a save button or submit button. And then there needs to be a way to say, oh, this field is invalid, so display some error and prevent the page from saving. And here, since we don't really have a form, we won't have this. Uh, but we can try to simulate it a bit and see what happens. Um, so text at length um, out of 50. Blum, 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 blum. Yep, and if we want it to be the same as Twitter, we need the um, wheel, um, the circle progress bar, <laughs> and we also need it to show in the negatives when it's below. So here it's like incre increasing as you type. It should probably be um, decreasing out of 50 to say like you have that much left. Um, but we'll get to that later. The, um, Yeah, so it needs to display some sort of message if it's going above that. Um, we we'll call that validation label equals text of length greater than max content length. And can we do some emojis? Sad. Stage frown. And we can add that at the end right there. So this is very dirty for now, but I just want to showcase how it works on principle. And then if people don't want to watch me go through building the whole UI, they can just stop there. So yep, yep. And wow, exactly right. So if I add one more, it should then show the smiley face. Ooh. And that should be considered invalid. Um, so cool, it seems to work just fine. Then the thing that I really want, and that is a bit harder, but it's also the whole point of this video, is for it to turn red once it goes beyond 50. So here, for example, 52. 50. So it should turn red as soon as you go further than this. Yeah, so here this should be red, 51. And um, yeah, there is an API for that in Draft.js, of course, and also in Drafttail. We tried to expose it. Um, so this is the Decorator API from Draft.js. I'll try to show it quickly. And again, if anyone is watching, feel free to interrupt and ask questions at any time. I'm always happy to um, answer questions about any, any of what I'm doing or, or anything else, really. Um, decorator, where are you? Over there? Oh, no, there. Yeah, so that's an example. Facebook comment input provides blue background highlights for mentions and hashtags. So this is the same as um, going back to Twitter. Let's check the health of the stream, by the way. 10% of frames dropped. Well, let's hope this is kind of fluid. 
So Twitter, if I do this, yeah, this text is still plain text, but it's displayed in uh, pink. And I'm sure it has plenty of other behaviors like, yeah, there is some autocomplete, but it's still just plain text. So this is what the decorator is for. You run it on a text and it detects whether the text matches some pattern, some criteria, and then it decides what to do with it. So we want to use a decorator like that, except it would do something once the text reaches this given length and turn the text basically with a red background. Um, so quite simple in how it's displayed, but it's a good demonstration of how the decorator API works. Um, boop, boop, boop. So let's do it here. And there's no existing example of this in this repository, so it would be a bit harder. But I happen to have an existing decorator for syntax highlighting inside the main um, drafted repository. Uh, I'll show it very quickly. Mm. So this right here is decorated text. As far as the editor is concerned when you type it, it's really just plain text. But since it's inside a code block, there's this decorator using prism.js, which is a syntax highlighting library that takes this text and decides to add some colors to it. So here the colors are a bit subtle, but for example, if you look at the string right there, they are, they are red. So this decorator is going to take this code within, within code blocks and run the prism highlighter in it, which is going to tokenize the text. So tokenize, if, if you're not familiar with natural language processing, that's when you take a bit of text and then divide it into different tokens depending on the meaning of each part of the text. So for example, here there might be a token called variable name, a token called assignment, and so on. I don't know the, like, the exact tokens that Prism uses, but that's the basic idea. And then once the decorator creates those tokens, it can decide, oh, this token should be rendered like with red text, and this one should be with that type of text, and so on. Or just like, this should get this class name and that class name and so on. So we'll do the same same thing here, except the tokenization logic will be different. Um, and yeah, for something that simple, token is probably not the right word, but anyway. So, a decorator needs to have two things. I think this might be a bit too complex of a decorator. But we can start from here, since it's already kind of written. Um, and I'll comment out all of this for now. And I'm pretty sure this can be gone. Yeah, and we'll call it max length decorator. I think this is the first time I demonstrate the decorator API, like any kind of documentation, tutorial, video. So might be a good reference as well for people who want to use this for other purposes. So max length and max length decorator. And then in here, I think it's meant to work like that. So again, quite a low level API in the grand scheme of rich text things that like compared to say inline styles or block types, but you can do quite a lot with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Ah, oh, yeah. Export class. And this is not needed. Yep. Yeah. Oops. Ah, oh, yeah. This is because I made it. So the actual API for decorators is 
this, I think. And strategy. So it's an object that has two properties. The first one, component, is what you use to render whatever you the creator is highlighting, matching in the editor. And strategy is what determines what to highlight, basically. So this API, those two keys, I think they come from the official DraftJS decorator API. I'll check quickly that I'm not saying shit. Yeah, so strategy and components. So strategy determines um, what to decorate and component is the visual representation of the decoration. So if you look at their example, for example, their strategy right there for hashtags uses this regex to match some texts and then the decoration component is a span that has some styles. So quite straightforward. Um, and here the reason I make this a class and not an object with two separate functions is that I, I usually like to, I mean, at least for the previous example, it made some sense to store some state between the code that does the do I want to decorate this the strategy and the code that does the um, display. So yeah, class was kind of the logical thing to store some states on, on the decorator. Um, yeah, that should work better. It's very sunny here today. It might not look like it, but it's already 11.30 p.m. in Finland. But yeah, and the sun is still up over there behind the clouds. In summer, it's crazy like that. <clears throat> so, nothing is crashing, but nothing is happening. So, that looks all right. Let's look at our decorator. So, uh, just for clarity, I'll rename this to render. Uh, it be, might be confusing to call it render even though it's not a React component. That part right there is a React component, but that's the only part. Um, let's keep it to render token for now. And get decorations is the strategy. Um, list that highlighted was because of the previous one. And options, I don't think this will take any options. So let's try to get this working, at least without any kind of like proper logic, but just that it shows something. So let's make it um, render our style, which is um, background color red. And then we can see that at least the decorator does something. And so how does, the, so that's the rendering part. Quite simple, um, you use React to define what the rendering of the decorator will look like, like what the highlights in the editor in rich text will look like, and then get decoration as a strategy. So basically, if there is a piece of text where the decorator should activate, you call the callback with the starting and ending offsets of that piece of text for the draft JS block that it matches. Um, and yeah, I doubt this is like clear at all if you've never worked with DraftJS before, but please ask questions if you have any. Um, so let's let's make it do something if the block type is unstyled, for example, which is paragraphs, and we'll call the callback from index five to ah oh no, let's say zero to five. So if you've been following along, you should kind of understand what it's going to do. It's going to decorate every unstyled block from index zero of the block's text to index five. And it's going to make them red. Yeah, okay, so it seems to do something great. Um, and we exactly we have exactly five characters. So now <laughs> it's pretty fortunate. So if I press a key now, it should clearly not be highlighted. It's not. Yes. 
And yeah, so you can see in Markdown, it's still plain text because we didn't do any kind of conversion um, of the decoration from like its formats in Draft.js to any other formats, but we can we can add that later. Um, and yeah, it's still stored as plain text. So here it's just happening within the editor. So there are some cases like syntax highlighting where you might want this um, decoration to be stored in the text and you can do that. But for things like um, yeah, highlighting whether the text is too long, it doesn't make much sense to store that in the text itself. So it's perfectly, it's perfectly exactly what we want for the block not to store any kind of this is decorated and for it to just happen dynamically in there. Um, and if I create a new block, it should also be highlighted since I said like the start of each block must be highlighted. That is pretty cool. Okay, so what we want now is for it to happen not at the start of each block, obviously, but for text that goes beyond this limit. Um, and let's see if we can do that. So that's that's going to be a bit harder compared to what I did already, but um, I'm guessing I'll need the block key and text. So the block key defines is unique per block, and you can kind of use it as a way to identify a block within an editor, and it's generated randomly with like six characters, I think, six alphanumeric characters. So I think collision has, collision, collisions are quite unlikely. And the block text is just a block's textual content as plain text. Um, I don't want it to be called for all unstyled blocks. I want it to be called if it goes above the limit. So something really simple I could do to get, get us started is to say if um, block text dot length is above max content length then call back on the, the the length of content that goes beyond that. So that would be um, set of set equals end offset. So end offset is the end of the box text if it goes above the limit, and start offset is blocks length minus that there might be some, some off by one errors here and there, so I'll reduce my max limit up there just so I can debug it more easily. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Is it the same block? That's interesting. Hmm. Maybe I forgot. Maybe I use a line break. Okay, so here it should. Hmm. That's definitely not ten characters. <laughs> Maybe I did it the wrong way around. Yeah, I probably did that the wrong way around. I think it's my start and end offset that are wrong. So the, the end one is right. But the start one should be so hang on I have a block of length 20 and I want it to start at anything that goes beyond 10 Oh, math is so hard while I'm streaming. Um, 
thankfully we have the rebel and so let's say the limit is five is four I want it to start beyond four then so it's block length minus that's six no ah fuck I'm stupid the limit is just max content length there is no need for math it just needs to start as soon as we are beyond the maximum okay that looks more like it so it always starts at 10 for every block and everything beyond 10 gets highlighted oh. That's exactly what we want, except we wanted to do that for the whole text, not just for every block. <laughs> it would be a bit silly. Like, you have to make rich text where each block is longer than X. That's. That could be useful in some cases, maybe. So let's put it back at 50 so we can try it on multiple editors at once. And um, yeah, let's try to change the logic basically that has this, like, if should be highlighted. So what we want now is not to take each block's text into account, but to take the block text plus the blocks above it, basically. So for block one, we only want to take the content of block one into account. For block two, we need to count block two plus what's above. And um, I'm sure there would be nice ways to do this if we had access to the whole DraftJS API. But here within decorators, we only have access to blocks one by one, which is why I, I was kind of uh, expecting us to need some kind of state that goes beyond one decoration. So what we can do is um, store the length of each block somewhere so that the next blocks can look at the length of the previous ones when they decide whether to highlight or not. So we can create this um, object that will contain the block's length. And then inside get decoration, we can store the block length of each block by key, like that. Um, yep. And then we did need to do some. Um, could an array be enough for that? I could store each block's index. Could have one array that has... That could be quite cool. But I guess I can... Sorry, I'm doing some like JS code architecture in my head. I quite like to do functional programming. Um, I guess to apply functional programming principles when I do stuff like that. So I always try to think of what kind of like array or object manipulations I, I would like to build and then what function I could apply on each item of the array. Uh, so I have I have an idea of how I think this could work and we'll we'll just see what happens. So here what I need to determine is um, content length up to current block. So we can call that um, text length up to here. And I'll find a better name later, <laughs> hopefully. Um, current content length. Previous content length. Um, so what I want now is to in my block length storage, find all of the blocks up to the one I'm in right now, and um, based on that, calculate the length by um, doing the sum of all the lengths of those blocks. Um, Object.keys That's going to be an array with all the keys, and basically I want to go up to the current block 
for which I have the key in the declaration. So I can do oh, so that's key and index. So I could do this by index, I think, on um, keys. So I want to filter. So filter, um, if you return true with the filter callback, it will keep the blocks. So I want to return true for blocks where the index is less than the index of my current block. That should be correct. Okay, and that's just the blocks that are above the current one, uh, before the current one, so from top to bottom. And it's not their length just yet, but we can do the length next. So let's see what happens. I think the decoration gets called once per block. So we get to see, we get to see it running. Yeah. That's exactly what I was after, four times. So here first, yeah, okay, that seems to be working. So first block, empty array because there are no blocks before it. Second block, one block before it, two, three. So this block has three blocks before it, which have the following keys. So that makes sense. Next step is to get their length. So we can reduce over the array. Um, if you've never used re reduce, is a very powerful function. You should learn it. Um, it does what we call a fold of the array of an iterable, which is arrays in JS um, mainly, at least with the standard API. Um, so a fold is when you iterate over multiple items in a collection and you compute the value for a given item based on the item and the result of the computation for the previous item. And um, you have, we, we have faults that are called left and right. So basically, it depends if you start at the right of the array or at uh, the end, or at the right, at the start or at the end. So index zero or index um, length of the array minus one. So in JS, uh, I think it's what we call the fold right, the reduce. So it starts from zero and then it goes to the right until the end of the array. So first parameter is the accumulator or previous value of the of the reduce and second is the current value so that would be my key and I think that's all I need. That's our callback that will do the reducing. Then we need to give it a start value so it says we're calculating the length start value is zero. So if there is nothing, it will return zero. And then the reducing should return length, so the existing length plus the length for this given block. Um, so if I say plus one, for example, I can quickly demonstrate what's going to happen in the browser. This is not the right code, obviously. It's not plus one, the calculation, but at least it will show you uh, how it works. Uh, and again, like this part is just like plain JS, but if you have any trouble understanding the overall picture, please ask questions. Um, so zero, one, two, three. So again, calling it for four blocks and the first one gets zero because there is no blocks before it. Second one gets zero plus one. So one, zero plus one plus one, two, zero plus one plus one plus one, three. Um, but now it's to something more exciting than zero, which is get the actual block length. Check. So we start the block length for each block at this stage, and then we retrieve it there, based on for each of the blocks that are before the current one. And I think that's correct. And just to make it a bit clearer, I'll also show the length of the current block. Okay, so first block right there, 
length before 18, length, length before, sorry, 0, length of the current block 18, second block, length before 18, length of the current block 18. So this block has 18 characters before it and is 18 characters itself. Makes perfect sense. Third block is more interesting. There is 36 characters before it, so the accumulation of those two. And there is only 17 characters in the block because there is one missing compared to the line above. So that seems to be working just fine. And based on this calculation, this the last block has 53 characters before it, which means that our like length has gone over highlight should cover all of these. So if I press delete now, it should say 50 out of 50. 52, fuck. <laughs> okay, I did my calculation wrong. I think there might be some difference in the calculation. I think that the count here at the top might be based on length of all blocks plus length of the white space between them. Whereas this count right there in the console is just based on the length of each block separately without taking the white space into account. So I'll need to think of this later, whether this needs to be taken into account and how to do. Do we need to take um, line break length into account? Yeah. So this is kind of why it might be a bit tricky to count the length of rich text things. I mean, that's an example of that. Do you want to take the length as like characters side by side? And then does the white space count? Maybe, maybe not. Not, not too clear. Like, Because if you just think of the plain text length, it's definitely not stored in rich text, like the line breaks between the blocks here, because it's different paragraphs, as we can see right there. But if you display this as like one plain text block without paragraphs, then there are line breaks. So do you count, do you count the, these in or not? Good question, I have no idea. Um, but at least it should match the count between here and there. And let's, we'll see how Twitter does it. I guess that could be the solution. Um, so now we want to mark things that go beyond that. So what we want to do is um, fuck that's hard. More math. I think I'm good at math, but it's just while you're streaming, I have to think of what to say at the same time, so it gets very hard. So let's do something that's a known length. 37, sweet. Okay, this is about Eighty thirteen. I have no idea why it says eighty thirteen. Maybe it's only doing the decoration on the blog that's highlighted. We'll see whether that's the case or not. Um, so current block is thirteen, and the accumulation of the blocks before that is eighty. That's a bit silly. Maybe I forgot something in my code, like removing the blocks. That's probably what's missing. <laughs> Um, to do needs to remove the blocks and they are gone. So I might need to change this logic here that stores the blocks because I think it's storing some blocks that are gone already. <laughs> but um, let's get it working once before. So let's let's make it simple for my brain and start highlighting if the blocks before have been above the max content length and, uh, and we'll do it for the whole block like before. What? If previous content length greater than max content length Max content is 50, previous content is 88. Why is nothing happening? Callback. 
Ah, uh, yeah. That's because none of the blocks are that long. So it needs to be from zero. Okay, that's better. So here, I should add some read content. Um, I should add some real content. This is what already? Yeah, it's really calculating with blocks that are not here anymore. We'll fix that next. My cool uh, max length. Oh. So here we've gone over. So based on my current implementation, the next line should be highlighted. Yeah. Now the next step is to actually highlight it exactly within the text where it starts going over, which is somewhere over here. Um, instead of doing the whole block as soon as the blocks be far over. So what we should do is um, const um, threshold equals ah. So it should highlight if previous content length plus blocks text dot length are above the limit. So if the length of the blocks before and of the current block are above, you need to start highlighting. And then the only question is where do we start the highlights? And that's the part that needs math. <laughs> start offset equals The accumulation of those two things. Uh, so what relation am I after here? It's something that will be zero if this is where I have to start my putting my thinking hat on. Let's put it at zero for now. And so now this is what should be working a bit better. Yeah, so this block goes over, so it highlights all the blocks. And now what I need to calculate is the offset from here to there where it goes over. Um, would it be as simple as all of this minus um, limit? Probably not that simple. Probably something like that. Because I don't want it to go below zero if it starts going over before the start of the block. Okay. Well, it's not perfect because it should also highlight the next block, but something is definitely happening. Why is it not highlighting those two then? Let's see. Okay, so it's highlighting three blocks. Just probably not with the right values. That is pretty cool. So now the only thing we want to do is that. I'm not a big fan of console logging for debugging. I usually use debugger. Um, quite a lot, but here I really have just like trouble understanding how it is meant to work, which is why um, it makes more sense to use a debugger. So 20, 42, and 51. 
whereas it should be returning zero. So there is something wrong with my calculation. I think I'll just do another if else because it, I'm sure there is a calculation that would make this possible in like one go, but it's a bit too much for my brain. So I'll make it into something that's easier to reason about. And I'll probably solve this with paper and pen after the cast, but not worth it right now. Like I'm sure that if I put um cap in here as well, a minimum on that minus that, it will work out. Um, so now in two parts, if the length of the previous content is greater than the max already, highlight the whole block. Otherwise, highlight only the part that goes over. Yeah, solved, done, over. Blah, 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 blah. So let's switch to Twitter quickly, back to our example. I can just copy my text actually. So I want the exact Twitter style. It's not that good, but it's just oh that's quite semantic EM and background color. They have this specific shade of red. Why is it EM? Why not like a mark? I think mark would be more semantic. Mark or highlight for reference or annotation annotation purposes. Hmm. Okay, that's not really it. Hmm likely to be relevant to the user's current activity. It doesn't sound too bad. So let's try Mark and let's give it more of a Twitter feel. Oh wow, that is way too dark on black. Um, Actually, I might already have some red shade on Traftail's repository. Um, what am I looking for? There are so many of those sites with all of the palettes, but I always forget the name. Do I have some red on here? I don't. Let's try that. Hmm. 
Yeah, I quite like this kind of tomato already. So I think before I go further ahead, I think this will be as far as I go when it comes to the Trap.js API and DraftL. And from now, it will just be like how you use it to build the UI and build this particular feature. So if you're only here for um, the Draft.js stuff, this is probably a good time to stop. If you're here for the React stuff, it's a good time to stay. <laughs> and I'll try to write more styles for this. Um, yeah, I think it's working. The next thing will be to solve this uh, discrepancy between the counter up at the top and, and the text right there. But otherwise, on principle, it's working. Um, get plain text. So how do I want to calculate? Do I want to take the line breaks into account, which is what get plain text does, or do I want to only take the blocks text into account? I mean, that's like, not like we care much either way, but it just has to be consistent. I think... I think we'll do it with that, the line breaks. Um, how do you replace all gain? I not replace all new lines though, just the ones. So get. So I need to go through all the blocks when I calculate the length up there and get their text individually. Oh. So I can just do it without the limiter. Like the meter is nothing and it should return then without count adding those line breaks. So 150 and what does it update to? 130 oh, still. Okay. Is there something I'm missing? 32. Real content. 14. Ah, is that because is that because of this? What's the length of that? That's thirteen, right? I thought this would work. But somehow it still it must have a check like if the limiter and exclude um exclude empty as a delimiter. That's okay, we can just go through. Um, that. Um, so it should be get block map, which is another draft JS API dot reduce length block block dot get text dot length let's see what happens now how's the stream doing not many people chatting around today <laughs> but it still seems to be live okay undefined out of 10 undefined out of 10 Great, what did I forget? Hmm. Oh, first I forgot to do that.
Okay, so it's returning content blocks. We don't have a get text method. That would be a bit silly. Hmm. That is cool. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why. Okay. What is it? Um, so I can use get length and not get text. Equals block get length, which probably just does like block dot text dot length, but whatever. Ah, uh, yeah, it's because I do text dot length. Uh, all of this just for that. Yeah, so that should work just fine. <laughs> I'm just being a bit stupid. Okay, so that is content length. Um, now this will be the same logic for both the decoration limit and the toolbar limit. 13, 13 steel, 13 steel, 14, great, it works. So now it's the same limit in both places. And what I need to change is the part where it forgets to delete box. <laughs> because like if I use this, no, it's not doing it anymore. Yeah, now it does do it. Yeah, my calculation still has something funny. Nope, we don't. And this is because of that calculation right there, I think. So time to take paper and pen and try to figure out how to do it. So let's say we have a limit of 10. I'll do it on the editor. I'm sure I can do it with like virtual paper and pen and pen. So limit 10 block one has a length of say two, block two has a length of five, and block three has a length of six. So two plus five equals seven. So that's the previous content before block six. And now at block six, it should start highlighting from character three, which is the limit minus what's before. Is it that simple? Well, it looks like it was that simple. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so can I have the same for any block with just this. Like, if I can I remove this completely and just keep that, I probably can. <laughs> yep, 
Yep. Ah, math. <laughs> So let's use a longer calculation and see if we still had this problem of removing blocks that are gone. I'm not entirely sure like how the state is kept in this, whether the decoration hmm. Yeah, so there is something funny going on here. It's not meant to highlight those ones. And if I remove this here, it should remove the highlights. What's the length of this? Yeah, 35. So it's counting something funny. So how do I solve this? So right now I'm, I'm keeping track of all the blocks, but I know removing them when they are gone, which means that probably at some stage it, it's counting the wrong ones when I remove the intermediary ones. Do I have a way to access like, the next block or the previous one? That would, that would solve it, I think. Um, decorators. Oh, I have access to the whole content state, actually. I could use that. So here I lied. I'm still going to use the DraftJS API bit. Okay, that's good. So I get the content state as part of this callback and I can use it presumably to access the length of the previous box as well, like do it dynamically without having to store anything. I could do get block map and then yeah do the same calculation um, so I'll keep that around just in case And then the idea is we want to take the whole block map and filter up to the current block. So we have block. Um, hmm. But they are not keyed by array, so we need to do it a bit differently. Um, I wonder if I can get away with storing this or not. I'll just do a reduce. So length and block And starts at zero and return length plus um, 
ว่าแบบเกตคีย์ and I'm going to stop at some stage so Uh, let's do the filter first. It's a bit stupid to do this more than necessary, to iterate more than necessary. Um, block. Is up to current. Is before current. I'll see if there is a better way to do this later. But I want to move. I want the stream to move on a bit. Um, yep. And then. Equals that and. Look at that key. Different from from block key. Okay, not a big fan of this like imperative style programming, but you will get the job done. So we are before the current block if we are before the current block, and the key is different from the block key. And as soon as this is true. As soon as this is false, the whole is before current will become false and it will only be false um, henceforth. And then reduce, which is um, length block. And we can do the same length plus block dot get length trick as above. Why did I do this again? Ah, yeah, to remove the state and the bug where she removed blocks, it would cause issues. Reduce, have to get start value, otherwise it breaks. Okay, seems to be working fine now, and since, since there is no state, I should be able to do just this, and it will always count it right. Isn't that magical? I could do that actually. What? Hmm. Yeah, okay, we still have this issue only updates for the block that's currently being typed. So if I have like all those blocks, it won't update this one until I type into it. Okay. That is annoying. So how do I make it updated the decorations of the next blocks as well? I'm not sure if I can even do that. Um, let's look at the Dr.js API. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I'd really like it to be possible. Yep. Maybe I need to set up a key on the component and it will re render whenever the key changes. Content state. Let's try that. Hmm. So the problem we have here is that the highlights 
for content that goes longer than the threshold only appear when you edit the block that has the threshold on it. Yeah, I have no idea how to fix this right now, so I think I'll just leave it out for after the stream and go on building my little circle progress bar like Twitter. Like Like that one and then I can go back to to this um, after the stream because I really don't know what the correct API is and I don't want to spend 10 minutes staring at the screen doing nothing <laughs> um, So progress bar circle, what can we find on the Google? That is exactly what I want. And if it's SVG, it's even better. Uh, radial progress meter, that sounds perfect. Yeah. Love it. Please tell me it's made with SVG dash, dash offsets. Ah, and dash array and dash offset. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. And then how's the calculation done? Ah, so it's only the dash offset changing. Okay, well, let's try that. I mean, it looks just perfect. Um, um, so we probably want to render this in the toolbar and can I use the icon? No, I probably can't use the icon for this. Um, maybe I can actually, but is it a good idea? I think, if I remember correctly, I set this up so it would take a custom icon component so you could implement your own um, icon rendering for the editor if you wanted to. I'll just see whether I'm... Look, look at the docs to see if I'm seeing something stupid. Icon. Yep. I could use a symbol reference, I think. Icon, icon, custom, icon. Okay, so we can also use a custom component. So that's what I'm going to, to use here. Um, I'll maybe just replace the whole toolbar button with the icon. Let's try that first. I'm not entirely sure why there is two paths here, but we can try it in there and see what happens. I'm pretty are you too good. Oh, okay, so it makes them it makes them gray one and then it puts them yellow one above. Yeah, that makes sense. Boom. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Draft JS. So um, Draft.js, React. So React supports SVG, but you have to use the JS names for the properties. Um, and the same will probably go for those two, which will need to be an object. 
that has the true properties stroke dash array stroke dash maybe like that dash array Okay, that's kind of it. Mm. Stroke dash array JS. It's not the wrong properties. So how do you find out the JS name for a property like that? Dash array, dash offset. Okay, that's it. So let's play around with this. Wow, that is cool. So zero, the whole thing, and three one, I assume, would be nothing. And if you go beyond, it's the other way around. Okay. <laughs> so how does the Twitter one work? And it feels like that. Okay, so same, same for this one. I want it to go, and then down, 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 down. So this should be not the radius. That's the di, not the diameter, the perimeter. Or is it the radius? I actually have no idea. I think it's probably the parameter because I think that's how those properties work. And whoop, whoop, and this is parameter times content length out of max. That's all like the other way around. So it's kind of like that, but it's probably um, no parameter minus that. Works exactly the same way. So maybe I'll keep this link around for when I um, publish this video. Yep, browser, here you are. Okay, so that's exactly what I want. And zero should be empty. And text arrives and it fills. And once it reaches the end, it should stop. 
it shouldn't like go over. Um, const color. Color. So, back to Twitter. If all goes well, blue. If we're getting near the end, say like 90%, or maybe like something absolute like 10 characters, yellow slash orange, and if it goes beyond red. Um, so for now, we'll just go red. Um, so if it's over, threshold, Um, where is my red again? Let's use the same red. And if it's below, we have a nice blue. So let's steal Twitter's blue, but don't tell anyone. What blue are you? A little radial counter. Mm, it's built the exact same way, but with percentages, which is much nicer than my stroke. Oh, actually, it probably is percentages here as well. No, it has, actually has, okay, well, that's probably something I'll leave out for, like, after the video as well. Um, where is your color? That's the one. Wow. That's a lot of style overrides. <laughs> Don't know what's up with Twitter CSS, but... So if it's over one thing, if it's not over the other. And color goes there. Yep. Ah, it's because I'm using paths, not circles. Oh, yeah. And is over. Is that check right there? Probably want it to be different. Like it shouldn't be. It should also be right if it's exactly on the stop spot. I think, like Twitter does it. Yeah, and it should also stop doing that. So if it's over, the parameter is just... Um, zero. Otherwise, it's our fancy calculation. That is starting to look good. Yeah, that's exactly how we want it to work. So, except maybe have something a bit fancier, but... So let's try it to match Twitter's implementation using circles instead of ours using paths. So they set the height and width on those things, which looks very convenient, without setting a view box. 16 with... I don't know the exact size for the toolbar, but... 16 seems like a safe one to start with. And then they use circle elements that have 50% for both the X and Y values and eight, I think that's the diameter. No, that's the radius, yeah. Oh yeah, and they have a different stroke width for the tube. I think that's a very nice touch. Um, so that becomes a circle. And path, you can go away. And stroke width of two. And so two was here and one was there. And fill, let's replace the opacity none. 
and r is 8 in both cases. So I'll put the things that are in common at the top. Okay. Is there anything I need to know about this? Overflow visible, yeah. And they rotate it, that's interesting. Ah yeah, because it doesn't start from where you'd think if you don't rotate it. That's why it was using a path in the other example. So here I'm just putting all the styles on here, but of course you'd want to use some CSS at some stage. That's not that interesting for me to demonstrate, so... And the rotation that puts it with the right direction. Oh, come on. One too many. Okay. So the visible should make it not crop at the edges of the circle. Yeah. Hello. This is. Yeah. And then. Um, why is my color gone? Is over a threshold. What did I miss? Why is it still blue? Ah, oh, it's because it's a much smaller circle. So I would also need to adjust my values. Um, I have no idea how they come up with this 27. I assume they calculate the perimeter of the circle. But I have no idea how. So the dash array is always the same. Um, perimeter of the circle, that's the equation. Oh, radius is 8. Okay, that's how they do it. Circumference. I think that's, that's 2 pi. Where is the formula? It's a very simple one. Two pi r. Yep. So let's try and make it configurable for some reason. Radius and then Radius times two times math dot. I use this so rarely, but it's good when it's there. Um, okay, and they just have one here for some reason. Need to. Starting to look very good. Nice. 
Yeah, so that's the part where it differs from Twitter. I think Twitter already shows red when it's right there at the end before showing that. Like. Yeah, so right at the limit is red already, and before the limit is yellow. Um, so let's match that. So I want it to be red if constant length greater than or equal. And then I want the number if it's like 10-ish near. So Probably do a little function for this. Um, get um, counter color equals content length. If content length Plus is greater than or equal greater than the red. Else, if the same thing, but plus ten, return yellow, orange, whatever. Else. Return blue. Mm, do it like that. Still haven't made up my mind well on whether I like early returns or not. Yeah, that works. Okay, I think I'll stop there because I've had enough for today and because it demonstrates quite a lot of Draft.js and Draft Tail stuff already. Um, so we can quickly look at the code again. We have two things. We have this control that displays the indicator of length as this circle, but whatever, it could be anything. And we have the decorations. Um, so quickly for the for the length uh, indicator, we get the length from the current content, and instead of using get plain text, which returns the whole content at once as a string, we use an iteration over all of the blocks to have the same calculation as below. And I think that makes sense because if you're doing doing this for a rich text block within your CMS, you don't really care that. The content will be displayed as like a long string. You care about it in rich text, which is p tags and so on. It just makes more sense from the user's perspective if they don't have to think of, oh yeah, I have to count the line breaks. And this decorator displays the, the red highlights when we go over the limits, which is pretty cool. And um, now it's all stateless, so I could actually separate those two functions and make them just like separate functions that return input output. So the decoration just 
makes a mark tag that has um, colored background and get decoration has some logic to calculate the length up to the current block and then the length of the current block and if that goes above a certain threshold you start decorating what goes above the threshold uh, so basically when you call this callback with a given um, start and end offset it decorates what's after with um, the function that's right there um, and yeah, I think that's about it really for this tutorial. So from the editor's perspective, we import the decorator and the max length control and we render them there. And yeah, um, from DraftTest perspective, it, it doesn't know that those two are meant to work together. So it's really uh, why I think it's good for those APIs to be so low level. You can do many things with them and combining them like that is an example of this. So you could, for example, say like turn on the decorator based on the states of the control or so on. like. Maybe sometimes you don't care, so you might want to say like click here and disable the highlighting. Um, so that's the way to, to, to do that as well. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hope you liked it. And um, yeah, if you have suggestions for the next streams, um, please fire away. <laughs>